meat is not helping us. Meat is causing us to age very quickly. It's causing us to have um, all kinds of irritations of the skin. It's just not good for us. You should not eat something that is dead in order to live. No, that's not the way. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Ailey's Fashion Lovers Chat Show, a platform where we get to empower our community and where we get to invite professionals and business owners in order to share their skills with our community here. In today's episode, I'll be speaking to Epong. He will be talking us through about the habit of healthy eating. So stay tuned to keep on watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, do subscribe so you can get to see more content that we provide on this very platform. So keep on watching. Hello, Econ. Greetings. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Excellent. Welcome to Ailey Fashion Lovers Chat Show. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you so much for accepting my invite to come to, you know, come to come and empower our community with the, with your, you know, your knowledge and skills. Thank you very much. Good. So would you please tell my audience more about yourself, please, Econ? My name is Econ. I'm 31 years old. Uh, I was born in the United Kingdom. I am half Nigerian, half Cameroon. Mum from Nigeria, father from Cameroon. I started off my journey at the age of 23 when I had a few ailments, which I don't really want to touch on, but I got rid of them through the teachings of Dr. Sebi. And ever since then, I've just been promoting health and nutrition. And I'm able to do that using my skills of graphics design because I studied graphics design, have a, a degree in graphics design. So that's why I'm able to design my own website, create my own products, write my own books, create posters, you know, everything's done by me. Um, so that's about it in a nutshell, really, about me. Wow, this is really good. <laughs> that's a lot of skills you've got over there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you i'm trying i'm trying my best you're I'm trying my best okay um i've got a couple of questions here for you Ikan. and mm -hmm. um i would like to ask you the first one so when mm -hmm. you talk about healthy eating what do you mean yeah. by healthy diet and healthy eating can you throw more light into that for me please um when i talk about healthy eating and healthy living I am talking about it from the, um, an African perspective. So um, for those that don't know, I, I'm a great advocate of an ancestor now named Dr. Sebi. And Dr. Sebi was the reason why I'm, to be honest, on this journey. If not for him, I don't know what I would be doing. So in a, in a sense, I kind of feel like this is a calling for me. So I'm, when I talk about healthy eating and healthy living, I'm talking about it from an African perspective or not the African perspective that we all know of today. Um, an African, general African diet would be, you know, cassava, amala, fufu, gari, all of these things. So this is not, this is not the African diet. This is not the African way of eating. We have actually forgotten the way we eat the ways of our mothers and our forefathers we've forgotten that way of eating now we believe that you know this staple food we call cassava and bush meat and all these things are foods but that is not it not not the way what we need to be consuming is foods that are natural also known as alkaline foods or electrical foods these foods were created by mother nature and could only be produced by mother nature for example, one of them is um, fonio. Fonio is a grain that grows in West Africa, Mali. It also grows in parts of Nigeria as well. And that is a, that is a, a natural grain that we can still use to create that, um, 
that love that we have for the fufu and the gari, you can still make the fonio in the same way, but it's non-starch. See, the reason, the, 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 the thing that is wrong with the foods that we're eating is they, they contain too much starch. So we need to remove that and bring in things that are non-starch. We can still eat with our hands. We can still make the, the, the swallow and all of these things, but we have to remove the starch. We have to remove the meat and we have to remove the dairy, the milk, the eggs. Mm. So alkaline foods is what we need to be consuming. And there is a replacement for everything that we love to eat. Everything that we love to eat, there will be there is a replacement for that in the natural kingdom of life. Okay? Wow. Wow. Everything. <laughs> so so just to touch on, I just want to touch on one meal. Mm -hmm. We as Africans, we love, there's never, there's never a week. A week could never go by where we won't put rice and stew and chicken in our mouth there's never gonna be a week that goes by for the rest of our lives and i understand that because that food we, we have an emotional connection to it we were eating it in the womb from our mothers and when we came out the womb we were still continuing to eat it so we have an emotional connection to that food so now once we if we want to replace that we have to replace it with three things the third thing is not really a replacement because we already eat it and we don't even realize. So number one, the rice. We can change the rice for wild rice or we can change the rice for fonio or we can change the rice for quinoa or maybe teff or spelt. These are all grains that I'm mentioning which can replace the brown rice, the basmati rice, the white rice, the long grain rice. All of this is garbage. All of these foods contain cyanide. All of these foods contain starch. That's why people can eat rice just like that because it's sweet. It's too much sugar in it. So we need to remove ourselves from the rice in replacement for these um, things that I'm saying now. Secondly, what will be the meat replacement? What will be the fish replacement? That will be the mushrooms. Now, a lot of people are thinking right now, hmm, mushrooms, well, I don't like mushrooms. Mushrooms, how can mushrooms take replace fish? How can mushrooms replace chicken? This is impossible. But I guarantee you, if I told you to close your eyes and I went to make some mushrooms for you and I put it in your mouth with your eyes closed and you was chewing on that, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between that mushroom and fish. Do you understand? The way that I prepared it. So that's all we need to learn. We have to learn how to prepare the mushrooms in the way that will um, allow us to consume it because it's all about taste we don't care about anything else other than taste and it's ironic that we season the fish and the chicken and the meat with plants we are actually in love with the plants <laughs> you know we we need the hot pepper we need the onions we need the basil we need all these seasonings from mother nature to season the flesh and flesh is not going to help you nobody is, is saying i'm consuming more shaki and ox tail and you know stockfish and all these things and i'm becoming more and more healthier nobody's saying things like that so we need to venture away from, away from there and start to learn how to prepare the um mushrooms and don't worry we have a recipe book for you Anybody that needs to know how to prepare these things, we have it ready. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then the stew. The stew is not really any different. We make the stew from bell peppers, um, cherry tomatoes. I know a lot of Africans like to use tin, tinned tomatoes, but that's not good because the tinned food, they contain a lot of chemicals to keep it preserved. Most of us are e even consuming tin food that is expired. So all we need to do is just start using the real bell peppers, real tomatoes, and then season, um, cooking that in good oil. Another thing that's ravishing us, that's eradicating us, is the palm oil. The palm oil is just destroying us from all angles. Palm oil is not good. Vegetable oil is not good. Sunflower oil is not good. These oils are 
causing high cholesterol. These oils mm. are making us wake up in the morning with a lot of phlegm on the chest. Talk less about the meat. These oils are causing us to be impotent, causing us to have fibroids, causing us to have um, clogged arteries and veins, heart attacks. Do you understand? This is what's happening to us. What we don't understand that is the food. Some people are, are going to blame every... They will even blame uh, it on magic or voodoo or something. They will never, ever say, maybe it could be the food that I've been eating since I was one years old. They will never, ever think of food because, again, the food, we have an emotional connection to it. You can take everything away from an African, but don't take a, their food away. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You can take the wife, take my, my children, take my husband. I don't care. Don't tell me that I cannot eat my food. And this is the ignorance that we have in our minds. Yeah, absolutely right. I've got one other question here for you. So, you know, during this lockdown that most people are in the house or, you know, we we hardly exercise enough. So mm. now that you, you, I know you did emphasize on alkaline food. So uh, yeah. how, how can we really know what is best to be eaten? Well, that's very, that's a very good question. Um, we will know, we will know what to be eating by using the nutritional guide. This is a book, yeah, that I've created. And I've created this book using Dr. Sabi's nutritional guide. So again, Dr. Sabi has put forward to the world a list of foods that we should be eating predominantly. These lists of foods that I have inside of this book, these are not all the foods in the world. There are many, many food, foods out there. However, many of the foods have been compromised. Many of them. So it's about eating less. For some people, it sounds crazy, but it is definitely about eating less. The less you eat, the longer you live. The less you eat, the longer you will live. It's as simple as that. The person that's eating five di times a day will not live longer than the person who's eating one meal a day. That's just normal. That's a normal thing. So this nutritional guide will help you. It has all the foods that you need to eat, whether it's from vegetables, whether it's from um, fruits, whether it's from the nuts that you're supposed to eat. Peanuts is not good. Um, what else is not good that we eat? Celery is not good. Um, for the In the Caribbean um, nation, the ackee is not good. The beans that we eat is not good. We can eat chickpeas. So, but don't worry. There's a lot of foods that we can eat still. There's no need to worry about that. We have it all here in this book available on, on our website wow wow um so actually you've, you've touched most of my questions here because my question mm. the fourth question was was for you to tell me more about rice because i'm also mm -hmm. an african descendant i'm from nigeria mm -hmm. as well and in nigeria mm -hmm. you know one of our best um should i say our top notch food is rice mm. uh mm -hmm. rice um we call it uh, yam, you know, the, 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 yep. the cassava, yep. which you mentioned. Potatoes, we, yeah, we, my dad used to eat potatoes a lot. But during mm -hmm. my journey as well about food, I realized this contained a lot of uh, carbohydrates. So yeah, what, what, what can we um, have as a substitute for this kind of food? For the carbohydrates? Yeah. Okay, so for the carbohydrates... As I said before, the grains are the carbohydrates. Also, there's a there's a plot there's a um there's a is it a vegetable? Yeah, a vegetable called chocho. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it before, but chocho is one good carbohydrate um, or fiber, should I say? And there's another there's another thing called um, squash. There's butternut squash. There's kombucha squash. There are many, 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 many different types of squash. I'm going to look for a picture if I can, if it's visible. So this plant, this here. Yeah. I don't know if you can see yeah. it. Yeah, this I can see it. Yeah. Is a good, is a good replacement for 
um, things like potato, anything of that nature, because it's just has this exactly the same texture. And also, like I said, the um, the squash. There are many yeah. different types of squash in the world. It's not just that one there, but those are the things that you're going to use a replacement for that. And as I said before, if you are someone that still likes to, me and myself, I like to use my hands to eat. It's normal. I grew up in an African household. My my mama, like I said before, she's Nigerian. My dad is from Cameroon, but he moved to Nigeria, so it was most it was mostly like a Nigerian household I grew up in. So I grew up on Gary. I grew up on ground rice. I grew up on all of these things. So all I do now is that I create. Let me show you from this book here. I create things like quinoa fufu. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so this is yeah. still it still looks like the same fufu that we're eating yeah. but it's just made from something called quinoa you just have to blend it in a food processor or even mash it with a mortar any way you want to do it it's still going to come out the same in the same way but now there's no starch it's not going to cause you to be constipated it's not going to cause high blood pressure it's not going to cause the diabetes so we can still eat in the way we want even that leaf what's it called water leaf that's a very excellent plant but what are we doing to adulterate it we're mixing it with palm oil we're putting a salted meat in there we're putting fish we're putting this that 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 do you understand but water leaf is a very 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 good leaf it contains a lot of iron good for diabetics good for people that are suffering from blood issues so you know it, with we are doing we're doing good in some places and there's some places where we're not doing so good and it's good that we even love pepper because that hot pepper that we love to eat that one has probably been saving our lives because that one opens the pores and allows us to sweat out a lot of garbage from our skin from our pores so that's good to eat the hot pepper very very good so there's there's just a little bit of changes that we need to do it's tedious because we're kind of like we're going all the way back to the beginning again to learn but life is about learning and growing you can't you can't be stuck you must always always change everything around us everything is changing our face is changing environment is changing mm-hmm. everything is changing so when you when you when you're met with this type of information you must try your best to change i'm not saying change tomorrow i didn't say change next week but you have to look into how you're going to start changing the way you consume food for the better for your life because if you don't have life you can't even eat that fufu if you don't have life you can't even just lie down and sleep comfortably and happily because you're living in pain i rather live a pain less life than a pain full life a life full of pain nobody wants to live that way wow i find this quite fascinating when when we look around here most in the shops you see you know you, you most things you see are like the starchy food and the the food mm-hmm. which are vegetables they're quite mm. pricey they're quite overpriced so yes. it, it, it makes people to kind of like have this temptation of um, consuming the high carbohydrate food yeah because it's cheap and cheerful a lot of us in it well as i said before i'm a nigerian at heart and i will i will know i know what most nigerians are thinking about especially <laughs> those nigerians who were born between 19 maybe 55 <laughs> 1960 1970 there's a way that those types of um, people born in that time there's a way that they shop there's a way that they spend their money they would rather buy the 25 kilos of brown rice than to go and buy uh 1 f- kilo of quinoa that costs 5 pounds do you understand what i'm saying yeah. so we're trying to buy things that will last long but it's not allowing our life to last long do you understand me so we have to make a decision so instead of thinking about hmm what can i buy that's going to loss the whole family one month it's not about thinking like that anymore we, we have to take that mentality out of our minds because if we can save for a car if we can save for a bag 
if we can save money for a TV, we can save money for all these things that can just disappear just like that. And you can't, life, you can't get it back. Once your life is gone, it's gone. Once your kidney is gone, it's gone. Once your liver is gone, it's gone. So we have to start thinking about our health and stop thinking about things that is that will that will give us um, short-term satisfaction and long-term pain. I do agree with most of uh, what you say. So when he, um, I'll give you an example. You talked about the basmati rice. See, um, normally it's always portrayed to be really fascinating food to eat. But there was a day mm-hmm. which I, I bought uh, a bag of uh, rice from somewhere. And um, I realized if I eat this rice, my side, my side kind of like, you know, stings me. Like, so I thought, oof, that's strange. Because I'm always very mm-hmm. careful with what I eat. So I didn't know. So I thought maybe I must have overfed myself and stuff like that. Or I tried mm. it again to make sure to know what, what's going on here. And I discovered it was that uh, very rice, the, the basmatic rice, which I don't know why mm-hmm. it's still like that. So I just took mm-hmm. it like probably it contains a very high uh, carbohydrate or it wasn't just good for me. So I, mm-hmm. could, I could resonate with uh, what you are saying over here, which is quite fascinating. We don't know what we are eating we don't know let's just be honest when we eat rice from whoever company you want to eat the rice from you don't know the integrity of that product and if i say to an african person today cassava came from portugal the portuguese made cassava in some places in my country africa they will kill me if i made that type of statement in their village they'll just kill me easily because of the emotional connection that they they have to that product they believe that is the poor man's food don't take away the poor man's food or whatever whatever they call it that statement there is very profound they will never believe that statement but cassava is not african cassava is portuguese the health of africans is declining every day 75 percent of african men over the age of 40 have a stomach that resembles a seven months pregnant woman why why is that it's because the food that you're putting inside of that belly is not going nowhere it's stuck why because nine times out of ten it's a starch it's not moving it's called constipation you understand and they say in africa when your belly is big like that it means that you're living well you're eating good that's a lie that is that I don't know why we I don't know I don't know I just don't know so this is what's happening so the people that want to listen they will listen and who do, those that don't hear they must feel so and you know you talk about the the, the meat aspect of, of things the beef you know obviously we Africans will love our beef you know I mean from where I am from you know most of them eat this cow leg and stuff like that but for me i don't like cow leg because i can see it contains um solid fat Mm -hmm. so what what is your take on in terms of uh, beef eating when you eat when you eat any meat whether you're eating a cow tongue cow foot cow ears cow nose if you're eating spider fish periwinkle crab lobster dog bush rat bush dog whatever you eat it i don't care which meat you're eating fish is flesh lobster is flesh cow is flesh every animal in this world is flesh so when you eat flesh what's happening in your body is that you're eating the blood of that animal and you're eating the flesh of that animal so it will rot inside your intestines it will rot inside of your stomach. It will cause you to have worms. It will cause you to have very, very bad body odor every morning. It will cause you to have bad stool. Cause many, 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 many ailments in your body. And you won't understand why, but it's the flesh. Remember, if you leave meat on your kitchen table for two weeks, that meat will be decaying. 
there'll be worms on it it'll be going um gray it'll be decaying so now if you put that meat in your belly does it mean that it will no longer decay does it mean that it will no longer rot no it will rot in your belly it will rot in the ocean it will rot in the mountain the only place where meat will never rot is in a freezer that's why freezers were created my mother she's no longer with us but my mother and many african women in this world a freezer is like a godsend because she can buy meat in january and eat it in december she can buy meat <laughs> in, in 2010 and she can enjoy that meat in 2015 so for me i understand what is going on meat is not helping us meat is causing us to age very quickly it's causing us to have um, all kinds of irritations of the skin is just not good for us you should not eat something that is dead in order to live no that's not the way so um in terms of um, the well-being according to what you've just mentioned here it has to change it has to start with uh, our mindset our well-being mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how can people integrate towards that okay so the mind so many people have to change their belief system it's the belief system the belief system in their minds needs to be changed so we need to be, to be educated education is the key to everything in life mm -hmm. if you're educated on what meat does to the body if you're educated on what starch does to the body mm -hmm. if you're educated on what drinking cow's milk goat's milk meat does to the body imagine i was born in the forest no no i don't know anybody except my mom and my dad yeah no education nothing is going to compel me to go to a cow and go underneath a cow and start to drink from that cow because nobody will go underneath a cow and start sucking on a cow's breast but as soon as i put that milk into a bottle ah it's okay now never so again we need to be educated and everything i'm saying you can find out more again on my website i have books that educate people on what they need to eat we have cookbooks as well for people to learn how to eat the food and as well the children because many adults sorry to say many adults they can't they can't be saved they are too they're too far gone they don't want to learn. They don't want to change. However, we need to get the children to learn. This is a children's alphabet book. So when the children are learning their, um, their alphabet, we need to make them know that A is for avocado, B is for banana, C is for this and that. And so that when they're learning these alphabets, they can also learn which food is good for them at the same time. So we must educate the children because the children are the future every 10 year old now in 10 years is 20 every three year old today in 10 years is 13 it's not a long time so when we educate the children at least them they can be okay and they will have children that are more healthier than us because right now we are giving birth to sick children there's children being born with diabetes there's ch children being born overweight. There's children being born blind. There's children being born with things that should be happening to a 70, 80, 90 year old. Children are being born that way. What they should be, what, sh what they should be going through at old age, they're going through at birth. You know, I have a question about um, some certain food. I, I personally find out that if I drink milk, my stomach feel bloated one so there was it got to a time that um, there was a time i i had a function which i wanted to do so i thought to you know lose some weight so what i mm. did i stopped taking milk i stopped eating meat <laughs> mm. I, I i i started taking um grapefruits um and guess what you know i, w I was like from this size that i am currently i shrink like i was very very tiny and i looked like a baby mm. Mm. <laughs> so i i still don't understand the concept 
that is in the milk, what makes it create bloatness to people? Because remember, milk is supposed to turn a baby cow into a big, massive animal. Remember that. The milk of the mother is making the child grow. Do you, if somebody lives on a farm, you know anyone listening. If you ever lived in a farm or around animals that have just given birth, within two months of that baby cow drinking the milk from that mother, the, cow, the baby cow is huge. So now if a human being starts drinking that milk, what's going to happen to you? Your breasts will be huge. Your stomach will be huge. Your arms, huge. Everything will be huge because that milk was not created to transform you at that speed, at that rate. It's supposed to turn a baby cow into a big animal by six months. Do you understand me? And not only that, they have added um, growth hormones to the milk. They're not telling us this. They're adding other preservatives and other chemicals to the milk. And we're drinking that. We're consuming that with cereal on top, with sugar on top. Sugar will make you gain weight overnight. We know this. And that's what they're putting into the milk. That's what they're putting into the cereal. So the cereal has milk. The, the, um, the cereal milk. you're drinking with milk and the cereal itself contains sugar. The milk has sugar everything has sugar and sugar is the fastest way to the road of diabetes to the road of over ob obesity we know this we see it you you are the we are all testimonies when i was eating sugar when i was young i used to be big my face was white my, my body was getting bigger because i was consuming things with a lot of sugar and rice has a lot of sugar milk has a lot of sugar cassava sugar cassava is sweet Gary, people are eating Gary with sugar and water today. You understand? The Gary, which you mentioned, um, I, one thing I observed about it, I, I, I didn't know that it wasn't uh, probably good for one's body, but there is one thing about me. If I eat any food and my my highs corner got folded the following day, I just don't eat that food anymore. <laughs> like when it touch your face here okay. and it's a bit gluey yeah that, yeah that's, that that's tells the, me uh, they call that sleep in the eye uh, like mucus coming from the uh, eyes uh-huh that tells me either it contains high sugar or high carbohydrate so i tend to kind of like pull away from such food mm -hmm. wow that's very true that's very because the african proverb is you don't put a bucket on the water to catch the water when the roof is leaking you go and take the ladder, you go on the roof, and you fix the problem in the roof. And then you'll never have to put that bucket there in your house again to catch the water. This is what we have to understand. Wow, interesting. Uh, so what can you use in replacing milk? I mean, I know there are some rice milk, there are some coconut there's, milk, blah, blah, there's, blah. What there's would coconut you milk, you can make walnut milk, you can make hemp milk. You can make, um, there's many milks that you can create using any of the grains that you want, even quinoa milk. There's many different milks that you can prepare yourself. Well, but milk itself, if you remove cereal, you, you will even look at milk and say, what's the point? Why are we drinking milk in the first place anyway? What do you think? What do people think that, they're getting from milk calcium no you don't find calcium in milk that's another that's the reason why i said when you said to me how do we change the mind education because they say to us that calcium you need milk to, to better bones to improve your calcium that's a lie if you want to improve your bones you have to consume a lot of greens and you have to consume a lot of sea moss, sea vegetables. Oh. That's how you increase mm. your calcium content. Mm. What oil? Because you mentioned the, the vegetable oil wasn't good. And um, mm. the sunflower oil. 
did you mention sunflower oil yep yeah, that's not good so, either and palm oil best? as well the best um oils to use oh. for cooking mm. would be grape seed oil g-r-a-p-e great great seed oil is the best oil to use for cooking food yes mm, the okay. second oil which is good is avocado oil okay oh, that's yeah, a good one that. as well another good oil to to use is hemp seed oil hemp h-e-m-p oh yeah i think I saw hemp that. seed oil is good as well now there's also another oil called sesame seed oil mm-hmm. which is good as well sesame seed oil now the mm-hmm. two oils that you should never cook with which is good mm-hmm. these oils are good but you shouldn't cook with them you should mm-hmm. put them on salad yeah and you can even use use them to cream your body which is olive oil and coconut oil yeah olive oil and coconut oil are two very good oils but you shouldn't mm-hmm. fry with them or put them in high heat no yeah, the garnish your salad with it with the olive oil yes. or garnish your coconut oil with your salad as well those are two mm. good oils to consume that's not for cooking you do not cook with those ones but they're good um, i remember the last time i spoke with you about the simos simos yeah i went i went to like a hundred shops i didn't get no simos <laughs> no simos <laughs> simos is not easy to find Nobody knows, Nobody knows what Simos is called. Nobody knows what it's called. Many people don't know. But um, <laughs> sea moss is basically, it's just a sea vegetable. And okay. the sea moss grows on rocks. So if you know any divers, any divers listening, if you dive into the water, you will see that there's, um, a, it looks like a seaweed and it's attached yeah. to rocks. It grows attached to the rock itself. And the rock is where the sea moss gets its minerals from. When you detach the sea moss from those rocks and you sun dry it, or you can even eat it raw if you want to, just like that. It will help you in almost every single thing that's wrong with you, except your blood. Sea moss will help you with your your brain, your mind. It will help mm. your thyroid gland. It will help your pituitary gland. It will help you cleanse your bowels. It will help you lose weight. It will help you get rid of any heavy, toxic metals in your body. Mm-hmm. Sea moss is very, 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 very good for you. Mm. That's fonio. Fonio is the grain that I was talking about that you can use to make mm-hmm. the fufu or the gari. It's just like that. You add water, you you turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, and it will turn into the into swano. So you can use it to to eat your soups. African name they call it acha. Okay. So you have to consume fruits that contain that seeds. Seed. Okay, right. Thank you very much for all this. This is quite um, quite fully packed. <laughs> so um, if people want to buy um, your books and um, mm. if they want to reach out to you, what is your social platform and what is your website and where do you sell your books? Okay, so my my main social platform is Instagram. Instagram is where I post majority of my information on, okay? Okay. And I also have a Twitter, which is eat to live, eat, and number two, live, not to die. All my social medias is eat to live, not to die. Whether it's Facebook, whether it's uh, Snapchat, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram, is eat to live, not to die. One word. Okay? okay. All spelled in one word. Um, I also have a website, which is also eat to live, not to die, one word, dot com. Okay. Okay? Eat to live, yeah. not to die, dot com. And you can find everything that I sell on my website. Anything. Whether it's books, whether it's CMOS, whether it's hair oil, whether it's tonics to drink, the bitters, because we don't like drinking bitters. Bitters is very, very good for us. Elderberry. Elderberry Mm. is a very fantastic herb that contains Mm. a lot of iron. So those are the things that we need to consume to increase our iron content. Okay? And we have elderberry on our website also. And please, people, don't think about money life is more important than money money is just a tool to either make you better or make you worse it's up to you 
we must not think about money when it comes to spending it on our well-being. You understand me? So let's think about the body first before we even think about anything else and spend our money on the thing, the very thing that gives us everything that we have. Life. Do you understand? When we feed the body, it's better for us because now we're placing more value into ourselves than into something that can be lost tomorrow. Mother nature can come and bring your house down in a second. Anything can disappear in a second. Do you understand me? Absolutely. Everything can be replaced in a second. Hmm. But you and I, everyone listening, you're priceless. You're a priceless individual. You're a special person. You're somebody that's needed on the earth for whatever purpose that God has put you here for. So for you to complete that purpose, you need to be able to live healthily. And that's the most important thing. Health is your wealth. Always and forever. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, to mention as well, your books are also on Amazon because I, I ordered two on Amazon yesterday. It should be coming yes, today. Two, only, two, only two of the books is on Amazon. This one, mm -hmm. this one yeah, is on the Amazon. Pocket one. Mm -hmm. And this one is on Amazon. Yeah, I got both. Okay. Yeah. Everything else you can find on the um, website. Your website. Okay. So yes. you, you, you've got a children one on your website. Yeah. Yes, the children's one is on the website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much for everybody. Lovely time. Oh, no, thank you for honoring the invites. It means the world to me. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. So um, we'll catch up pretty soon. We will do. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you very much for being here today. I hope you've enjoyed the session. And I hope you find it very useful. Do feel free to leave a comment by letting me know what part of the video resonate more with you. And um, feel free to share the video with um, like-minded people. And um, do not forget to subscribe to our channel because um, then you can get to see more of the content that we provide on this very platform. So thank you very much for, once again for tuning in today. And um, do enjoy the rest of your day. And hope to see you in our next episode. Goodbye.